I've been here for 64 years and I've seen drought and I've seen fire but I've definitely not seen water like this in the period of time that I've been here. Well on that day um, we knew it, we saw the water coming up to the uh, to the road level. We thought it was right, so uh, this is a bit about nine o'clock. We went to Mirabar to the chemist to get James some tablets. So we got those, and on our way home, between Mirabar and Carrisbrook, there's a fire brigade truck parked on the side of the road, or in the middle of the road, the lights flashing and so forth. So we pulled up. He said, "You can't go through, mate." I said, "Well, look." I've got to get through there because I live there. I'm not just a uh, just a uh, you know a bloke just going through. I've got to get home and see what's going on. He said, "Well, you go at your own risk," which we did. And we came there. As we get further into Cowesbrook, the water's getting higher and higher. Yeah, bad day. So the bad day morning of the of the flood, like we had been watching the water slowly sort of coming up. Over a few, over a period of a couple of days, but it had happened before, and then it subsided. And this time, it seemed to be different. And we went down to the fire station to get information about what was happening and what we could do. And they said, "Oh, look, you're fine. It's not going to flood." And um, I just got a feeling that there was something not right, that something was, you know, going on that um, that was a little bit untoward, like there was sort of like a bit of an aggression feeling sort of there and so it was confusing we sort of didn't really know what to do so we came home and and we could just tell by the water rising that it was not um going to stop yeah we just <laughs> felt that it was going to be quite bad even though we kept being told oh no you're right you know you're right so um yeah the water was coming in our back gate when we left when i sort of started packing the car up and yeah, just thought I'd make my own decision about going, take the kids and the cars and we had a dog at the time, a different dog at the time and yeah, so we started packing up and um, we went into Maryborough. My son-in-law, they went out to do something, he said, hey Moz, he said, you better move out in a hurry, the water's come down to your bloody garage. I said, heavens above. Jane said, what are we going to do? I said, Hop in the car and we'll go out and we'll go up on the hill with the boys where the boys are. We're safer. And by that time, I say the water was just pouring down our driveway, coming through the fence there, be honest, knocking everything down in its path. Luckily, we left the garage door open so the water could go in and do a swirl and come out again. But if we had the garage door shut, goodness knows what damage it would have done to the garage. Although at the time, it did do a lot of damage. So then we went up on the hill and uh, I've never seen water like it before in my life. How high did the water get inside your home? Uh, well it got in the cattle drawer, but it only splashed up into it. It was, it was like a washing machine inside. What was in the lounge room ended up in the bathroom. What was in the laundry ended up in the front bedroom. So it must have gone around and around. Yeah, but it was such sweet. a short time it was here. Yeah, well, how long did it take for it to receive? It was gone by about half past three in the afternoon, oh. I believe. This is half past nine in the morning. Yeah, so it was such a short period of time, yet it did all that damage. Yeah, so when we come home, we, like, sort of from the outside, like from a distance, sort of looked still the same until you sort of come around the corner properly and noticed the fences were down and there was sort of like... The where, roller doors were all skewy from the shed and yeah, everything was covered in mud. Everything was mud, like slippery, like we had to be very careful where we where we walked. Uh, like we were very mindful of that, like if we had it slipped, you know, we could have hurt ourselves. And then um, we went around the back door of the house. We couldn't get in because the couch was over the back of the door. It had sort of um, floated over the back of the door so Jeff had to really push to get in but just everything was like covered in, in mud you could see where the water level had been on the wall. Can you tell me a bit about um, obviously the water receded and your recovery effort what you had to do in those weeks to come those months to come? Well our daughter and son-in-law got a cafe in Murrubara and on Saturday they went to work and they made the food up and they said to their staff that they were coming out here they'd pay them to come and work here for the day <clears throat> Not one of them would take payment. And they all came. They pulled up carpets, and how they cleared the whole house in one day, I'll never know. They did a fantastic job, didn't they? 
Oh, friends, they did. Friends, they did too. friends came too. No, and there were did. people going around from Mirabara to see if people needed help. And those that didn't, didn't, you know, that had help, they went on to the next person to they found people needing help. Yeah, yeah. It was just a fantastic community Unreal. effort. Unreal. Isn't that great? It was wonderful. Yeah. Mm. Well, people, you know, it just shows people. you when Australians need help, they'll help each other. It's really good. It's good. Wonderful.